Hey guys, Steve Wiedemann, SEO expert here, doing another WordPress plugin tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at W3 Total Cash. Not the kind of cash that you can go and spend on buying more WordPress plugins, but uh, the kind of cash that refers to uh, your website performance and how your content serves to a user. Without getting too technical, I'm actually going to skip all the technical garbage and just tell you that having this plugin installed um, and using its default configuration will definitely help uh, help serve content to your users a little bit more efficiently. Second part of this video, it's, it's going to be one video, but I'm going to try to do it all in, in one session. The second part, I'm going to talk about using a content delivery network just very quickly, uh, and you're going to watch me actually set up the content delivery network for that trainingguide.com. So uh, let's see how I do. <laughs> all right, let's start with um, searching for the plugin. You're going to go to plugins, of course, and you're going to add new. This is a free plugin, too, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and search for W3 Total Cash with a E and a CH, not, uh, not SH. I'm going to search for plugins. And you'll notice that I already have this particular one installed. If it wasn't installed, all I'd have to click is the beautiful little Install Now button. Do make sure you're using the one by Frederick Towns. At the moment, that's the best available uh, version of this particular plugin. So I'll go ahead and install it. Once installed, you should be able to go to Performance over here on the left which will show up after you have it installed and you'll be able to do some pretty cool things this little window comes up just ignore it for now um, and you can do some pretty cool stuff so here's where you are going to set up and configure everything by default it sets everything up so that the uh, the basic browser caching happens the way it's supposed to so literally you could just install it and walk away Next time you add a new plugin or disable and re-enable a plugin, uh, the little prompt will come up here in the top. It'll say, do you want to refresh the cache? Definitely a good idea when you see that message to go ahead and act on that. Click the button that says, yes, refresh the cache. So um, it, basic settings, that's pretty much it. That's all you really need to do at a basic level. Now, there's some other things that we can do to, to enhance this um, by adding some other cool features and so forth, but from a bare bones, get it installed and have it doing what it needs to do to do a better job of what your website was already doing from a performance perspective, that's it. So now I'm going to go into part two. Part two is we're going to install a content delivery network. Uh, we're going to be using a uh, program called, a program, a uh, service <laughs> called MacCDN. You could also use a service called uh, Cloudflare. Uh, both of them are pretty comparable. Uh, some of the developers I work with and trust think that MaxCDN might give you more controls. So we're going to go ahead and go with MaxCDN. But again, you can pretty much use either or. Um, so we're going to start with going to Manage Zones once we've created our account. I think it's like 39 bucks a year or something if you want to do this. Uh, go ahead and go to Manage Zones. We're going to go to Pull Zones here. And we're going to create a pull zone. Pull zone name. I'm going to call it that training guide. Uh, original server is going to be our website. Make sure you get the HTTP in there. We're going to ignore custom CDN domain for now. And the label, we can uh, we can leave that alone. I'm going to go ahead and select the compression checkbox because we that's the whole point of doing this. It's because we want uh, we want this content delivery network to serve our content faster. So by compressing our content, it gives the um, it gives the system a way to deliver that content a lot more efficiently by compressing some of that that content. So we're gonna go ahead and click on create. You'll see a bunch of stuff moving around for a second, and then it says pull zone has been successfully created. Not too tough, right? Okay, we're gonna go to manage account. Go ahead and right click. Open in a new tab. Under Manage Account, there is a link here called API. Click on API. And uh, there shouldn't be anything in here, but because I already have another website in here using the API, um, it's it, there's already something here. So I can either add a new key, or I can probably use the existing key that I used for the other website as well. So if I want to, I'll go ahead and create Add New Key. Here's the API key. The description, we'll call it that training guide. And let's go ahead and leave it as uh, master and save. OK, 
Okay, let's go back to APIs. Now we see the two that are here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back into WordPress, into the W3 total cache. And we're going to scroll down and just make sure that everything that's supposed to be enabled is enabled. And by default, everything is, as I just mentioned. However, at the bottom, uh, we're, we're enabled to do something pretty cool. We can actually add a CDN. If you're using Cloudflare, notice at the bottom, there's, there's already a section. I just saw it a second ago and it disappeared right in front of my eyes. There we go. If, if you have a Cloudflare account, you can set that up pretty easily. Otherwise, if you're using a custom CDN like we are, we're going to select Enable. And then we're going to find NetDNA Max CDN. And we're going to click on Save Settings. Now, for this to work correctly, we're going to need to add all the API information. So let's go ahead and go to our content delivery network. And we're going to add uh, all of the relevant information that we need to make this work correctly. That API that we just created, it's right here. Let's go ahead and grab that. Control C. And our actual API will be here. So we're going to go ahead and grab this API ID and paste. And now we need that cool little pull zone that we just created. So let's go back to our pull zones and the unique URL that we just had a minute ago. Go ahead and click on this if you want, or you can just copy and paste from the screen we were just at. Control C, Control V. And now we will click on Save All Settings. Awesome. Now we got to go to our browser cache over here. Boy, that's really annoying. Let's just get rid of that. Don't show message again. OK, great. So now what we want to do is select some specific options. We're going to select Set Expires Header. We're going to ignore Set Cache Control. We also want to make sure make sure that the um, set entity tag is checked, and you can leave these two as is. Go down to the next section. Same thing here. Everything looks like it's set up default. However, the cache control policy should be set to public. Let's keep going down. Everything the same here. Set cache to public. Keep going down the list. Set cache to public. And then we can go ahead and save all settings. And next, we are going to empty our cache. Let's go ahead, instead of going to the top where it says empty caches and so forth, what we're going to do is just go to performance, click on empty all caches. And let's go into our browser settings. And let's go to history. And let's go ahead and clear our browsing history. I'm going to go ahead and empty the cache, not the browsing history, but that actual cache here, just to make sure that everything is working the way we want it to work. Let's go back over here. And I think we should be done. Let's go ahead and check out the website and uh, see if I broke anything. <laughs> that trainingguide.com. Everything seems to be OK at first glance. Let's go ahead and reload just to make sure. We should have done a test before, too, to see how the performance was. Uh, but you know, I, I know just from looking at it before that there was a little bit of sluggishness on some of the images. Let's go ahead and open this image in a new tab. And right now I'm still seeing that it's pulling this URL, which it shouldn't be. It should be actually pulling the URL for the CDN. So for some reason, something isn't working. Let's troubleshoot and figure out what happened. Let's look at one or more images as well. Let's make sure that there's nothing else quirky going on. All right, let's go back into our W3 total cache and go back to browser caching. Oh, preview mode is active. That's why. Duh. Let's go ahead and deploy. Let's see, preview settings. Oh, we want to disable. Duh. Let's disable preview mode. And now we should be live. 
theoretically. Let's go ahead and empty caches one more time. See, it's so easy to miss these little things. I'm glad you're watching me do it because you probably would have done the same thing, or maybe not. And <laughs> let's go back to our browser. Same thing. Let's go to settings. We're going to go ahead and go to history. Clear browsing. Done. Go back. Let's reload. And let's see if the CDN picked up our, our content. Open image in a new tab. There it is. Ta-da! Success! We were able to do it. Now what you see happening is this Neil Patel picture is showing up on the actual Mac CDN. It means it's being loaded from the cloud, which means I'm accessing it very quickly from a web server right near me instead of having for it to hop across the country where I'm actually hosting uh, the website miles and miles and miles away. So that content's delivered much more efficiently. And let's go ahead and make sure everything's working correctly. Let's test the URL. I'm going to test a JavaScript to make sure JavaScript's working well. Start by subscribing to, um, let's just do test1 at seosteve.com. Subscribe. This little JavaScript worked OK. R-E-S-S-E-R-S. -S -E Looks good. Everything's working as it's supposed to. Let's go ahead and test. HTTP www.webpagetest.org. I'm going to grab this URL, pop it right into webpagetest.org, which is, by the way, uh, uses the Google web page performance test. So you don't need to install any kind of special uh, extensions or anything on your browser. You can actually use webpagetest.org because it uses that Google service to test how fast and how well you're delivering your content. While it's waiting, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. Okay, and we're done. So there's still an issue with first byte time, but as I understand it from the guys at Cloudflare and MaxCDN and uh, with the hosting company, it's actually not going to hurt you at all in terms of uh, where you rank and how fast you're delivering. But now you can see I'm getting A's across the board, which is you know really good to see. It still hasn't detected the CDN for some reason, but again, we just made this change. So I'll probably come back in about an hour or so and rerun it again, and uh, hopefully we'll see some different results. In fact, I'll even try running one more time while we're on the, the video. And there you go. A, 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 all the way across the board and one little C. Whatever. <laughs> so that's pretty darn good compared to the Fs and the, the Cs and Ds and so forth that we had before we did this uh, performance optimization. So that is W3 Total Cache. Definitely uh, do some more research, experiment with the other settings. There's a lot more that you can do and play around with. Be careful. Sometimes things break uh, in the process. It's easy to uncheck a checkbox if something does break and go back to where you were. Um, if you have any questions on this specifically, uh, use the comments below. I'll try to answer it as best as I can. Uh, if not, I'll guide you to somebody who can uh, give you more information about it. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next WordPress uh, plugin SEO 